Welcome back to CCTV, wherever you're tuning in again to our news bulletin. Today's headlines, an interview on Taiwan, some highlights of the social event, including the announcement of Chemcon Asia 2015, but first we have a look at the Q&A on North America. And it's something we're proud of because there's a lot of existing information out there, whether it's a published, unpublished domain, we'll pick it up from anywhere. There are reliability scores given to the information, so it's a weight of evidence approach. But we are proud because we want to make use of every bit of information that is out there that is useful and relevant in the entire risk assessment paradigm. So the world-class scavengers is something that has been used quite frequently. So anywhere it's out there, we'll, f we'll try and find it and see if it's useful. Mike, do you have a comment on this topic? Yeah, yes. Please. Yeah. Uh, Mike Glasberg, ECHA. I want to clarify a bit, at least from our side, what happens with Canada and with Australia in their programs. Is that for the initial prioritization, they used information which is on our website. So it's both the CNL inventory and the um, REACH <coughs> dossiers. So that was just using the public data, using the website. What happened after then, specifically Canada, in certain instances, was interested in certain information. We didn't provide anything directly to Canada. What happened is that we informed the registrants that there is this interest. We generally do it this way. And then the registrants themselves decide or to give or not to give. And usually they have an interest to make their case or to build their case because they put it in the REACH dossier. And then the registrants themselves actually provided the information to, uh, to Canada. Well, I. I suppose they're, I don't know if it's a conflict, they're actually sort of coming at environmental protection from uh, two different approaches. Um, a hazard-based approach, merely, again, not a regulatory approach, you're putting information out there that when you look strictly at hazard, there are differences between chemicals and people need to make choices based on that. And, and, and likewise, in, in green chemistry, um, you may indeed run a, a um, run across uh, situations where um, a chemical, one chemical may have a uh, less desirable hazard profile than another, but may, as you say, have other attributes that, if you looked at it in total, have a um, smaller environmental footprint. In both of those cases, that's information that's in the space that needs to be addressed. But again, since they're not regulatory determinations, society will have to balance those out. It's not a question of EPA saying one is better than another, but I think in the spirit of putting out information, it's putting out as much information as you can on a chemical and then letting society decide how to balance out what you say are either conflicts or, or different approaches to looking at um, the impact of chemicals in society. In his hometown Chicago, I had an interview today with Mark Grenda about the makeover of the Taiwanese Chemicals Management Program. Today it's all about Asia. It seems regulatory affairs in Asia are no yoke. More and more upcoming regulations in Asia defines today's regulatory agenda. For instance in Taiwan. Today I talk with Mark Grenda of the Efton Chemical Corporation about his expectations on the upcoming changes in Taiwan. Mark. What has been Taiwan's driver for revamping its chemicals management program? For, for Taiwan and many countries, especially in Asia Pacific, primary driver by far is SICOM, the strategic international approach to chemicals management, and their 2020 goal, which, which in short is that by the year 2020, all chemicals will be produced and used safely. What are the differences and the similarities between KREACH EU reach and the new Taiwan regulations? They have some similarities, they have some differences. Uh, one of the similarities is outcomes. Uh, in each of those schemes, uh, Korea, Taiwan, Europe, the outcomes for reviews will basically be a substance will be allowed, uh, it'll be restricted, um, it may be banned. Um, those outcomes will be the, will be, will be the same, uh, authorized. Um, also, the, another similarity is the um, that each one has a pre-registration phase. Europe already had that. Uh, Korea and uh, Taiwan plan to do that as well. Um, in terms of differences, um, there are some significant differences. The biggest one by far is the scope. In, in Europe, it's virtually all chemical substances under one met ton, polymer excluded. Uh, for, for Taiwan and K Korea, 
the, it will only be designated substances, substances that they're going to look at volumes, they're going to look at hazards, and they're going to determine which substances they want to designate. So a much smaller scope of chemicals for Taiwan and Korea uh, than, 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 than for REACH. What do you think would be the challenges for industry and Taiwan as all of this moves forward? For both resources is the answer. For industry, the resources for complying, for Taiwan, the resources for, for implementing. One of my favorite countries in Asia is China. I've extensively worked there and I summarize the country as a country in motion, like its regulation. Today with us in the CCTV studio, Leslie McDougall, Director of Regulatory Affairs of the ACTA Group, where, with whom I will talk about these changing regulations. Leslie, welcome. Thank you, Tiered. It's always a pleasure to be at ChemCon. Leslie, could you express your views on the changing regulations in China? Yes, of course. Um, the regulations are going to continue to evolve, um, unlike their Western counterparts, uh, which have a much more um, fine, detailed, prescriptive regulation such as REACH, which is one regulation, ex extreme you know, detail, significant amount of pages. Uh, the Asian framework is one in which regulations are based on what we would like to consider foundation regulations, such as Order 591 and Order Number 7 that will be further uh, discussed during the China session. What we envision is that, as we've seen in the last few years, um, a multitude of regulations uh, continue to develop and evolve underneath uh, Order 591, and we expect that trend to continue over the next several years. Okay, and in relation to the changes, what will be your statement of the day? My statement of the day is China is revising its notification guidance document, um, and would your company benefit from additional level of uh, detail or guidance regarding the process? Okay, yeah, I would definitely like some clarification. Let's also hear your votes via the Camp Connect app. Leslie, thanks a lot. Thank you. Time to find out more about yesterday's social event. TJ, are you there? Yes, I'm at the hotel. I'm at the Hall of Lions, named after these marble lions. I'm still in the afterglow of last night's social event. Here's my report with breaking news on ChemCon Asia 2015. The social event of ChemCon the Americas 2014 takes place at the Shed Aquarium. The aquarium is an iconic building initiated by John Grave Shed in 1924. When this iconic aquarium opened in 1929, there were no fish yet inside the aquarium because of several delays. For one, they didn't have the salt water needed for the fish. that had to come all the way from Florida in railroad cars. But even then, Chicago residents flocked the building to see the 300 diameter octagonal building, all built from Georgian white marble. When the shed officially opened in 1930, it contained the greatest variety of sea life ever exhibited. Kong, that's exciting. Thanks, TJ. See you tomorrow. That's the forecast for 2015. Now the forecast of the day. Close to Hong Kong, China and Taiwan. Then in the afternoon, Russia, India and Turkey. And at the end of the day, Southeast Asia and Japan. Thank you for watching and have a great day.